Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and this is Dota Underlords. Today I'm going to give you a rundown of the basics of this new game by Valve. This game was released somewhat suddenly about 24 hours ago and is still very much in beta, so anything that I say here is subject to change. That being said, the core gameplay ideas and concepts shouldn't change too much since this game is based heavily on the wildly popular Dota Auto Chess custom game mode. If you're familiar with that version, then much of this video will be repeating what you already know, but there are some unique innovations on the genre here in Dota Underlords. The first thing to mention is how to access the game. In order to play it today, you need to have bought the Dota Battle Pass for about $10. Then from the in-game Dota home screen, there will be a link to add it to your Steam library. If you do not own the Battle Pass and do not want to buy it, don't worry. Dota Underlords will be free to access for everyone in about one week. When you open the game up, this is the home screen, which is fairly bare bones right now, and I'm sure they'll be adding more features and refining it over time. Let's hop right into a solo game against bot opponents so I can show you how the game works. The nice part about playing against bots is that you can pause the game and progress at your own pace. That makes it perfect for getting a feel for the game without the time pressure of real matches. Let's just start on easy mode for example purposes. So after this loading screen, we'll see the names of all of your opponents. We get into game. So games of Dota Underlords are divided into rounds that last about a minute or so each. Every round has two phases, a preparation phase and a combat phase. The preparation phase lasts about 25 seconds and the combat phase can last up to one minute, but it is often shorter. Since we're in the solo played mode, I have disabled the timer, but normally this red bar up here and this uh, number counting the number of seconds uh, that I have left in the preparation phase. We start the game in the prep phase, and at the start of it, your shop pops open with five options of units to purchase. The number up here in the upper right hand corner of each unit indicates the cost in terms of gold, while your current gold is shown down here in the bottom right, uh, where we currently have one gold. Luckily, every unit costs one gold right now. Units can range in cost from one up to five gold, with the more expensive units naturally being a bit more powerful than the cheaper units. At the beginning of the game though, we only have access to the one cost units, but our gold and our options will grow over time. Each of these units has an ability whose icon is in the top right by their name, and they have alliances, which are the icons shown down here at the bottom. These will become very important later as we discuss the strategy of the game. But for right now, let's just work on the mechanics. To buy a unit, you simply click on the unit and it'll disappear from the shop and it'll appear down here on your bench. Since we have no more gold, we spent our one gold, let's close the shop either by pressing the space bar or by clicking this X button in the bottom right next to our gold. This button then turns back into a shop icon and we can reopen the shop in the exact same way to go back. So here's the main screen of the game and there's a lot going on. Uh, but in the middle, you'll see an 8x8 grid, just like a chessboard. And that is where our units will be placed and where, they're, where they will combat the enemy units. Notice the bottom four rows are highlighted, as we can only place our units on these four rows, since our opponent's units will be occupying the top four rows. To place a unit, simply click and drag from your bench onto your chessboard into any open spot. You'll notice the highlights around the unit. See it highlights the one unit all around the, where my cursor is? That's the unit's attack range, so he'll naturally attack one square away, because he's a melee unit. So I'll just put him down right here. To start the game, we have a limit of one unit on the board, as indicated by this one by one icon. Over time, the limit will increase up to a maximum of 10 units. If we have bought excess units that cannot fit onto our board, they have to stay on the bench for the round, which can hold up to eight units. Once we've placed our unit on the board, we're ready to go to the combat phase. Normally this happens automatically after 25 seconds, but in the solo mode I have to manually advance it by clicking the play button down here. So this first combat round, it, the game pits our units against two AI controlled creeps, which are trivial for any unit to defeat. Combat in this game is completely automated, with no input from the player. You can choose which units to place and where to place them on the board, but once the battle starts, you get to sit back and watch the fights. Then there's a special phase called the looting phase, where we get a choice of items. This looting phase occurs every round that we face the creeps, but it does not occur after rounds against opponents. There are two types of items in the game. There are uh, units that get placed on 
items that get placed on units, and there are global items. So to choose an item, you simply click on it like I did there. So after that looting phase, we go back to the preparation phase for round two. And our shop has refreshed with new units. For the second turn of the game, we notice we earn more gold. We have now two gold to spend. We can use it on two one-cost units or a single two-cost unit. We did not get we did not get a two-cost unit in this roll because it is random what units pop up, but we did have a chance of getting a $2 unit this turn. So to help us make a decision on what units we want to buy now, let's look at the alliances that I mentioned earlier. These are the icons at the bottom of the portrait. So if you hover your cursor over them, you can get more information about each one. These alliances are synergies or bonuses that you can unlock for having multiple different units with the same alliance on the board at once. For example, Tiny is a primordial. That means if you have two primordials, say Tiny and Morphling, who is not on the board right here, but he's another primordial unit. If you have both of them on board, then when your primordial units are hit by an opponent, they have a 30% chance to disarm that melee attacker for four seconds. So that in, kind of makes them better than the sum of their parts if you have two primordials. Whereas if you have four, then when they're hit, all of your allies, not just your primordial units, have that 30% chance. Now these effects do not stack. So for instance, if you have the four primordials, you lose the two primordial bonus and you just get the four bonus. Some of these other bonuses are simply buffs, such as Tiny is also a warrior. So if you have three separate warriors, say Tiny, Tusk, and Axe, all on the board at the same time, then all of those warriors will gain plus 10 armor. Whereas if you get up to six, you know, later in the game, then your warriors, instead of getting plus 10 armor, will have plus 15 armor, which makes them very resilient to opposing attacks. So, uh, you can also see the abilities that they all have. You can click on the names above the portrait here to get more information. So let's take a look at Tiny. Most units have an active ability that they cast, but others have a passive effect instead. Tiny here has an active ability called Toss. In order to cast this active ability, the units must gain mana. They gain mana by doing their normal attacks against opposing units and by taking damage from opposing units. The more damage, the more mana in both cases. More damage done or more damage taken means they get mana faster and therefore can cast their ability quicker. Most active cooldowns or most active abilities will have a cooldown, meaning that even if they have enough mana to cast it, they will not cast it until their cooldown comes back up. You'll also see these uh, three columns of stats here. One for one star, one for two star, one for three star. All of the units that you buy from the shop start out at one star, which is the basic level. But if you have three copies of the same one star unit, they combine into a two star unit with increased stats and a more powerful ability. Then if you have three copies of the two star unit, which is equivalent to nine copies of the one star unit, they'll combine into an extremely powerful three star unit with further increased stats. With that in mind, let's look at the units that we already bought. So I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to put the shop back to the side. So we know that we bought Clockwork, who is a scrappy inventor. So ideally, we'd look for some other scrappy units to potentially get his three scrappy bonus, or look for another inventor to get the two inventor bonus. Let's take a look at our shop. We notice that we actually don't have anything that makes that synergy. So instead, Let's just buy two of the warriors, let's say Tusk and Tiny, to work our way towards getting the warrior bonus, which costs three warriors. So let's hide this away, and let's go back to our board. Now we notice that we're up to level two, right? So it says one of two, which means we can place another unit out on our board. Let's throw our buddy Tiny out there. Same method, just click and drag and then drop him in. So once we, um, once we have our units out on board, we look at this right-hand panel here. 
and you can see these icons pop up that are representative of the alliances that we have active or that we're working towards activating. So you can click on it and you can see that the warrior, we have one box highlighted right now, which means we have one on our board. And the second one is, uh, is outlined, but it's not filled in. That means that we have another warrior on our bench to contribute towards the synergy. Similarly with Primordial, we just have one of, and Inventor and Scrappy, because Clockwork counts as both of those. So this will help you to track what alliances you have active and which ones you should be working towards next. You can also notice that there's this red flashing icon. So let's click down on this tab, which will replace these alliances with the item that we picked first round. So this is a an item that goes directly onto our units called a cloak. Most items go directly on units. Uh, well, about half of the items go directly on units and the other half are global items. For the items that go directly on units, you simply click and drag them onto the unit you want to place them on. So this item will give them 15% magic resistance and we're going to put it on clockwork here. But if we change our mind and want to put it on tiny, you can just click and drag and freely move it between your units during this preparation phase. And the other type of item is global items, which we did not have any option of in the first round. Those items you do not put directly on units, but rather they provide a passive effect for your units uh, for the rest of the game. So let's move on to combat here and see how this goes. So now we're going to fight round two, also against melee creeps. These creeps, there's you notice there's three of them now, uh, which is to reflect the increasing difficulty because we have you know more units on our board. But we will also get the option of picking up another item this turn. So we'll go back to the looting phase, and we'll get to pick another item. So here we see two global items. They are on the square icon. And you'll also notice that there's tiers of items. Uh, these are all tier one items. And just like units, uh, items are divided in tiers between one and five. And naturally, the higher tier, the better the item. Early in the game, we'll only have access to the low tier items and units. But over time, we'll get access to the higher and higher tiers. So now we go into the third round, and so for the first three rounds of the game, we're going to be fighting these melee creeps and getting chances to, to loot items. But on round four, we'll face against an opponent. In this case, it's a bot opponent, but in a real game, it would be against a real player opponent. Those opponents will have the same kind of unit lineups that we're using instead of these neutral creeps. So let's just uh, pick a couple units here. Here we see a two-cost unit, tree Treant Protector. Let's pick up, say, Treant and Enchantress. Now, Treant and Enchantress are both druids. And they have an ability that the lowest star ally druid is upgraded level if you have two druids on your board. So let's see how that works. So we're going to put Treant out there, and we're going to put Enchantress out there. But now we see that we have four of three, which doesn't work. So we need to remove somebody off of our board. To do it, you do it the same way that you add a unit. You just click and drag them off. If you did not do that, you see that Trian is highlighted in red. That means if I try to start the round right now, or if I ran out of time, if the clock was normally ticking, the game would automatically remove Trian from my board uh, before going to the combat phase. But since I want Trian for my synergies, the Druid synergy, let's just remove the clockwork for right now. We also can put our item out there, that Gloves of Haste, which increases the attack speed of our unit. And let's put that out on, out on Trien as well. So now we're ready to go to the next combat, where we'll face six neutral creeps. And we'll get our last chance to grab an item here in the early game. There'll be more chances later on to get higher level items, but for right now, this will be our, our last item for the early game. And you see, we were able to easily dispatch them because Trien uh, was a two-star unit you saw there was two stars above his head, which means he was even stronger than normal because of the druid buff. Here we'll just pick up another, you see we have a tier two item here. These tier two items have some unique effects. 
And obviously the higher they get, the more interesting and powerful the items become. If you don't select an item there, which I didn't because I was a little bit too slow, uh, it will just automatically pick an item for you. So remember what I had mentioned about you having, having upgrades to your units to get to two star. Normally that requires three copies of the same unit. Well, we know we already have a tiny as indicated by this icon down here. That's to show that if we pick up a second one, we'll be a lot closer to getting a two star tiny. We also can pick up pairs of units like Bloodseeker or Witch Doctor here to get us closer to getting three copies and getting them upgraded. A two star upgraded unit is substantially powerful than, more powerful than a one star unit at this stage in the game. So let's pick up the tiny and we notice we only have three gold left, so we don't have enough to buy both Witch Doctors. So let's just pick up both Bloodseekers and leave one gold in excess, because that'll carry over till next round. So we can assign our item, the Blink Dagger, although I don't think the Blink Dagger is very good for right now, so we'll save that uh, for later. Since we're in solo mode, we'll face bots and their unit lineup, but normally we'll be against a human opponent on this round, and the units and items that they have assembled just like we did. There are eight other players in the game, and each of them has their own unit lineups and player board. The way the pairing works is that every round, a random opponent's units will be duplicated and appear on your board, while your units will be duplicated and go to another player's board to fight them. It is not necessarily the same person. For example, if I'm fighting Athena bot here, that does not necessarily mean that Athena bot will be fighting me on, on their board. So let's go to combat and see how this develops. So we're gonna fight against Saul bot, but over on Saul bot does not necessarily mean that we're fighting on their board. So we can see that they have their three units and our units are fighting them. Uh, looks like we're winning as we have uh, slightly more powerful units than them at the moment. If you win on your own board, you get one bonus gold for the next round. You'll see that in the income breakdown here in a moment. If you lose, however, you take damage as a player based on how many units were left, how many opposing units were left. This damage will likely be lower off in the early game, but later on losses will cost you more life total. You start the game at 100 life total, and if that is reduced to zero, you are eliminated. Let's close the shop here to illustrate this point. So you see on the left that every player's icon shows up here along with their current life total. We are still sitting on 100 life total because we won our round, but four of the bots lost and lost between three, well, one and three life total. And it varies based on, based on how the combat plays out. Losing one round is not all that bad since you only lose a small bit of life total, but this number will increase over time. You'll take more and more damage as the game goes on and as units get more powerful. But losing any one game is not, is not that detrimental. Over the, over the course of the game, this list on the left will rearrange so that you can easily tell who is doing well and who is struggling. You can also click on each player's icon to take a look at their board. So let's take a look at Athena Bot's board. By clicking on it, you'll be transported to their board and you can see their units, the organization, and the items that they have. To go back to your board, you can simply click back on your player icon. So let's talk about gold for a moment before we get into the next round. Gold is one of the only resource is the only resource in the game, rather, and there are a couple of different ways to earn it. The first is to sell off units that you have. To sell a unit, you can simply click it and drag it to the left for this trash icon, and it'll show you how much gold you'll get. So for selling off clockwork, we'll get one gold. Notice we went from seven to eight gold. You can also simply click the piece and then press E to sell it off. So let's sell off Tusk by just pressing E, and it does the same thing. You'll generally want to sell off units that do not fit your strategy, Perhaps their alliances don't match up with your other units, or perhaps you never found other copies to upgrade to two star. Since you have a limited number of spots on board and on your bench, eventually you'll need to sell off units just to buy more. The other way to gain gold is the natural amount you'll earn every turn. 
After the initial creep rounds, you'll gain a baseline of 5 gold per round, plus 1 additional gold if you have won the round, plus interest on any unspent gold that you have. You'll get 1 point of interest for every 10 gold you have unspent, up to a maximum of 50 gold for 5 points of interest. This means that by mid-game, you should try to save up to 50 gold to make sure that you're generating the most possible gold every turn. You'll also earn gold from winning streaks and losing streaks, up to 3 extra gold per round. Obviously winning each round is ideal, since you do not take damage and gain the one bonus gold for winning, but if you're on a losing streak, the game has a nice little catch-up mechanic to hopefully get you back into it. The worst case scenario is to alternate wins and losses such that you don't get any win or loss streaks, and thus earn less gold. So what else can you spend your gold on, other than obviously buying units in the shop for their gold cost? You can also spend 2 gold at any time to press this button, which re-rolls your shop and refreshes it. So you see these 5 units here, and I've got 9 gold, but by pressing this button, I'll go down to 7 gold and get a new assortment of 5 units. This will, this will naturally refresh every round, but if you really need a certain piece or looking for a certain upgrade, you can spend gold to take another shot at it right now, rather than wait for next round. It's generally not advised to use this reroll function early in the game, as you should be focused on saving up gold and trying to get higher amounts of interest, rather than spending it on rerolls. You can also press the, the R key for to, to reroll as the default hotkey. You can also spend your gold on leveling up. So on the right here, you see that there's this experience wheel that will gradually tick up over time. You'll, every round, you'll gain one experience point, and when you hit the next threshold, you will level up. The number of units you can place on the board is determined by your level. So right now, we can place four units. At higher levels, you'll also have a better chance of getting the more expensive units in your shop each round. You can speed up this process by paying five gold to buy four experience points. You can do it by clicking this button or by pressing the default hotkey T. So let's do that. Notice we went up to five because we bought four experience, which exactly got us up to the four. If we had one extra experience, it would spill over and carry over here and we'd be at one of eight. Unlike rerolling, you do want to do this in the early game since it means more units and a better chance to win the round and better opportunities to buy more powerful units. The other button here is to lock the shop. So if you click this lock button, which the default hotkey is Q, it will prevent this shop from refreshing next round. Like I said before, it will naturally refresh every round, but if you lock it, say you want to buy, I want to buy both Queen of Pain and Chaos Knight, but I only have two gold right now, I can buy one right now, and the next turn, when this shop would refresh, it'll just unlock and I can buy the Chaos Knight or Juggernaut um, with my new gold. So let's close this off and let's put our units out. So we'll put Queen of Pain out there, say right here. And we can even put a second copy of Tiny out. However, you'll note if we go back to the Synergies tab up here, you'll notice that even though we have two primordial units, two copies of Tiny, we don't have the primordial synergy. That's because two copies of the exact same unit, in this case two copies of Tiny, do not count towards getting the two synergy. You need two different units to count, which is why our Druid synergy works, because we have Treant Protector and we have Enchantress. So let's run through a couple rounds here and just get you a feel for how the game plays out. So we'll start up against another bot, and we should... Uh, we should beat them as this is on easy mode. But once again, this combat is completely automated. So I have no control over what happens in these fights other than where I initially placed the units and what units I chose to place. You should pay attention to these fights though to get an idea of how your units interact, how they move, how they target opposing units, so that you can try to formulate a strategy based on you know how they're performing. So we have six gold right now, so let's just buy everything in the shop. It's kind of free to buy them, as I can just resell them for the exact same amount that they cost. So for instance, 
Juggernaut cost me $2, but I can just sell him for $2 right back. Every one star unit sells for the same cost that you bought them for. But if you upgrade a unit, then you cannot, well, you can sell it, but it won't get you the full amount back. So if I combined, say, three Juggernauts, it would cost me $6 to get him to two star, but then he would only sell for $4 instead of, instead of uh, the six that I paid to get him. I think our lineup is pretty good right now, so let's just go to the next combat. So after the first three initial rounds, we'll be fighting against real player opponents up until round 10. Those first three rounds are we, where we can get items, and we can't get items after player rounds. But there, the more chances to get items will come on round 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, every five rounds, starting on round 10. That's when we'll face another group of creeps, and if we beat them, we'll get a chance at some higher tier items. So notice this breakdown, we get five base gold, plus one for a winning streak, and plus one for victory for our total amount. We still haven't found three copies of the same unit, so we haven't gotten a chance to show you how, how upgrade works. But let's pick up Chaos Knight, as that means we have a pair of him, and that means one more Chaos Knight will get us there. Uh, let's just pick up Beastmaster as well, and let's go to the next uh, next combat. I'm just going to get us up to, to round 10 so we can see how that works. And then um, the last thing I want to talk about here on this combat is this middle tab here. We talked about this tab, which has the synergies and shows us what we have active. And we talked about the item tab. But here in the middle, there is a tab that kind of shows you the breakdown of the, of the fight. Uh, the shop's about to pop up here in a second. Let's hide that. But in this fight, you can see how much damage each of your units has dealt. So this helps you to get a good idea of what your strong units are and what your weak units are. Here we can see that Queen of Pain has dealt a lot of damage, whereas Enchantress, not so much. There's five different tabs here, one for damage, one for DPS or damage per second. It also shows your opponent's units in that regard. One for damage taken, one for healing done. And last one for kills, how many individual units that, that character dealt the final blow on. So it's good to have this up just so you can get a general idea of what units are performing well for you or are underperforming and not carrying their weight. So you can have a better idea of what to replace. We still have not found an upgrade, but we have one tree in, so let's buy a second one. But we don't have room on our bench. See, if we try to buy this right now, it says cannot buy units when your bench is full. So to clear some space, we're going to sell off, let's sell off Axe. So you click on Axe and then either press E or drag it over here or click this button to sell them off. Now we've got a spot open on our bench and we can pick up Treant. However, we just noticed that we got down to nine gold. Remember what I said about interest? It comes every copy of, or every increment of 10 gold. So we should probably sell something else off to get up to 10 gold so that we can collect our extra gold of interest. So let's sell off Drow Ranger, who would also sell for $1. And that'll get us up to 10 gold. So now next turn, we'll collect one gold of interest. So we're gonna continue to grow how much gold we're generating. So let's go to the fight. So we're up against Athena Bot again. Once again, the pairings are random. There is no rhyme or reason to who you face every round. It is simply purely random. You can see this damage is updating live. So we can see when Timbersaw did a big ability or Lena did a big ability that dealt a big chunk of damage, they spiked up. But luckily our team was still stronger over time and we were able to win the fight. So now we'll see the breakdown of our gold. And since we're on a win streak, we actually are getting plus two gold here. Remember that'll go up to a maximum of plus three for win streak, as well as we got grabbed interest. Here we start to see some of the three cost units. These are substantially more powerful than the one and two cost units, and it'll just keep getting more powerful. So let's buy, let's say, Terrorblade. Now let's put Terrorblade on our board, but we notice that uh, we are now six of five, so we have to remove someone. So let's remove Queen of Pain and go to combat again. I'm still trying to find an upgrade so I can show you how that works. Uh, to upgrade to a two star, but really it's it's as simple as if you simply buy the unit 
they'll automatically combine if you have three copies of them somewhere. So if I would buy a tiny, it would just combine the tinies that are on my board. So here's a battle that it looks like we're about to lose. Yes, we did lose. So now we get to see how the losing works. So when we are defeated, you'll take damage equal to the star levels of your opponent units who are still alive. Notice since we lost by four units and all four of their units were at one star, we lost four life total. As the game goes on, you'll take more and more damage because opponents will have higher star levels and you'll just take a higher baseline amount. So here we found our tiny, our third tiny, and notice he's kind of like shining in this regard. So if you just click on him, he'll automatically combine. Even though we have no space on our bench, it'll buy him and combine him up on our board. So let's take a look what just happened. We used to have two tinies here. Now we have one two-star tiny with double the health, double the damage, um, and just all around a better unit. But also, since we combined them, that means that we have an extra spot available on our board. We now are four of five. So now we can afford to put somebody else out there. So let's put out Beastmaster. Now we're going into round 10, which is against the creeps again. So let's go to that combat. And notice these creeps are going to be a little bit stronger than before. They've got more health total, more damage. But that also reflects the increasing strength of your board. And they'll have a higher chance of giving the higher tier items. Luckily, we're strong enough to still defeat them. But if we were to lose to them, we would still get an item, but we would have less choices. If we don't kill any of those three golems, we wouldn't get an item. But if we just killed one of them, we'd have just one item to choose from instead of three. So here we can buy a tier two item, or we can buy uh, this global item. So let's buy that to show how that works. Embarrassment of Riches. So we go down here to our items tab, and we still have the blink dagger, which we haven't put out on anybody inside the shop. And we have Embarrassment of Riches, a global item. This says that neutral rounds will offer one additional item choice from now to the rest of the game. So when we fight the creeps on round 15, on round 20, and so on, we'll get four choices if we beat them instead of three. So that'll increase our quality of items later on. So that's the game. You repeat the cycle, buying new units, finding upgrades, building alliances and synergies, to increase the power of your board and then fighting opposing units opposing players and dealing damage and taking damage whenever a player's life total is reduced down to zero they'll be eliminated and and then the last man standing wins normally this takes between 30 and 40 rounds but some games can be shorter or longer depending on how it all plays out so one last thing before I go, I'm sure you've noticed there are a lot of units, alliances, and items to get familiar with. You can look at the documentation of all of them by clicking on this button in the shop, uh, which will show you all of the heroes along with their alliances. And if you click on them, you'll bring up the details of every single unit. And you can filter by alliances and items here. You can also check this out when you exit the game, back to the main menu, uh, in this tab, same icon, with the heroes organized by tier, which are, are of course, course of increasing power and cost, the alliances, so you can see uh, like the primordials, which is the one with tiny, and you can see every unit that, that has that trait, as well as the items in the game, also organized by tiers, tier one, tier two, and so on. Once you get a feel for the game, take a look around and read these units, alliances, and descriptions. I would suggest avoiding real multiplayer games until you have a handle on all of these, since the turns are timed and you don't really have that much time to be reading every single unit and description. All of these will be changed over time through balance, page, balance changes and introductions of new units and items, so make sure you kind of keep aware that some of these, if you read them right now, may change by time this goes live or over time. If you found this tutorial helpful, please do like and subscribe. This covered the very basics of gameplay, but stay tuned for more in-depth strategy videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.